The following program contains scenes and language of a frank and explicit nature. Viewer discretion is advised. Live from Los Angeles. Hoo-ha! Here we go! This is exciting, isn't it? <laughs> we'll do it live. We'll do it live! Fuck it! Fuck it! We'll do it live! <laughs> Hello. Hello, everybody. It's 7 p.m. Do you know where your deados are? They're right here. Right here. How is everybody? We had a new time last week. Yeah. Because <laughs> I had an event to get to, a very important event that I was very excited about. Extremely important. Had to happen. Yeah. And, of course, I didn't even get let in. <laughs> so I moved heaven and earth for absolutely nothing. Nothing. The only consolation I take is... There were a few deados that got to join the live stream earlier that don't usually get to be here. Yes, we had some people in the UK join us last week, and uh, apparently now is too late for them to be here. Um, yeah, I would question how committed they are to uh, <laughs> the deep and dark and uh, true crime grittiness. Yeah, I don't care if it's 3 a.m. Oh, jump on. Oh, we got someone down under. So it's, it's Wednesday. It oh, must be Wednesday then. Yes. Happy hump day. Hey. <laughs> How is everyone's eye sockets? Are they burnt out? Did you stare at the eclipse? Because that is our first story of the day. Yeah, it was pretty much eclipse mania yesterday. Oh, it was pretty much eclipse mania <laughs> yesterday. It was. Uh, yeah, we had a lot going on. We got a clip here. Let me bring this up. Yeah, in Indianapolis, they had front row seats. And oh, yeah? Yeah, it was where you could get a really good viewing of it. That was prime viewing, Indianapolis. Oh, this one is actually... All right, this is not that, but we can watch that. That is actually from the seventh sign. Oh. Uh, well, then we don't have... Let's start with that Oh, one. here it is. Okay. We'll get to both of them, but apparently... As the clock struck 3.06 this afternoon, indie time. Everyone cheered on the moon to keep yeah. going, keep going. <laughs> and go it did, totally blocking the sun and bringing the crowd to cheers. And when it happened, I was absolutely blown away because I've never seen anything that looked like that before. Kind of a religious experience. You got to be here to see it. Wanted to be in the totality area. And so. what did you think when, as it was happening? Oh, my God. Do you want to see the telescope? The Waterman family from Chicago brought their two young sons. And it's a core memory, right? Like, even if they don't remember, we have pictures, we can we have videos, we can show them. But even four-and-a-half-year-old Jack liked what he saw. What was your favorite part? Uh, I like when the sun disappeared. <laughs> So the eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> it's to the point. Yeah, exactly. I hate parents like that, though, that are like, well, OK, this is going to be a really core memory and we'll have photos and stuff. So he's going to it's going to be in his brain till he's an adult. Now, look at it. <laughs> yeah. Like everything's <laughs> planned in Tupperware and labeled. Yeah, exactly. But that kid, that's a great kid. Yeah. <laughs> I like the part when the sun hid from the moon. <laughs> it was nice. 
Uh, <laughs> That's what I would say if they interviewed me. Yeah, today. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so what's the seventh sign thing? Okay, so I think Demi Moore predicted the 2024 lunar eclipse okay. in the movie The Seventh Sign. <laughs> the sun. And that's it. Yeah. That's our lead in. Okay, here we go. Became black as sackcloth. The moon became red as blood. The eclipse. What? The sun turning black in eclipse. It's on my calendar for tomorrow. Dun, dun, dun. Tomorrow meaning 2024 lunar eclipse. Yeah. <laughs> even though the movie was 1988. Yeah. You know. Did I convince you? I convinced, yes. Okay. Sold. <laughs> it's a bit of a stretch, but. A little bit of yoga. <laughs> Uh, what's up, Shannon? How are you? Duchess of Darkness, hello from Vegas. Jim Vim in South Ontario. Any news on Prince Randy Andy going to jail, possibly? Oh. Uh, we'll have to look into that for you. There's yeah, a lot well, of Prince Diddy news. <laughs> right. <laughs> Diddy and Prince Andrew are basically the same person. Yeah, exactly. Certainly the same circles. Yeah. Talking about circles, how are the circles under your eyes? Are they completely torched? Because there are concerns about eye discomfort uh, that appear to rise after solar eclipses. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm glad I had nothing to do with any of that. <laughs> <laughs> Google searches about hurt eyes spiked Monday afternoon, just after many U.S. communities experienced the total solar eclipse. So, yeah, people seared their corneas shut, apparently. <laughs> it's not worth it. You can watch it on TV. Yeah. It must be so interesting working for Google and seeing how the trends happen because I remember during the uh during the pandemic, nobody realized that we were all getting coronavirus and on Amazon and on Google, people were buying candles and they would get the candles shipped to their house and they would, you know, light them up and then be like I can't smell it. This candle sucks. So there was a rash of candle companies that got one star reviews across the country because everyone couldn't smell anything because they had coronavirus. And so it was like these companies were getting murdered doing nothing wrong. <laughs> so the candle business is the first casualty of the pandemic. Yeah, it was. Wow. <laughs> Their industry really melted. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> um, like people's eyes yesterday. <laughs> They have those special glasses, though, right? Well, yeah, people were putting on all sorts of things. I'm sure no one just stared at it without glasses, right? Trump did You'd the have last to... time there was one. Shut up. Yeah, I swear to God. <laughs> Only real men <laughs> wear glasses. <laughs> New Orleans in the house. What's going on, Anderson? New Orleans, one of my favorite places. Oh, we got a mass hole. Oh, boy. JCJM oh, Barry. No. Let's go. We what, got... what part of mass? We got enough mass holes right here. Oh, we got in a, the studio. A regular Emily Peterson here. Hello from Wisconsin. Hello, hello. See Wisconsin. I there's a good, there's a good person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got someone in Ireland. Three twelve a.m. What's up? I'm all right. Me. Oh my gosh. Is that the furthest? No, not the furthest. Australia is the furthest we got here. Well, good morning. I don't know what else to say. Have yeah. a shot of coffee. <laughs> Ooh, Cape Cod. I go to Dennis Port every summer and get some uh, ice cream at Sunday school. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Just an ice cream. Shop. Oh, okay. Uh, yes. Yeah, we you go. went to Sunday school growing up. Uh, I went to Catholic school, so I didn't have to go to Sunday school, okay? Oh, Still wow. had to go to church on Sunday, though. It was uh, abusive, borderline. Okay. Uh, Bonnie Tyler sang Total Eclipse of the Heart. Do you Total remember? Eclipse of the Heart. Which, you know, childhood me would sing Total Eclipse of the Fart. <laughs> Very uh, high brow. Yeah, is that one of those you made all your buddies <laughs> laugh in elementary school? Oh, yeah. Around the lunch table? Yeah. What was the other one you had? It was just me at the lunch table and I was laughing. So, yes. The Bismarcky song, right? Oh, oh, that baby, you, you got a disease. That was a good one. Yeah, that was a big hit for you. <laughs> Uh, the total eclipse of the sun led to a total eclipse of the heart for many music fans who streamed the 1983 Bonnie Tyler power ballad to celebrate Monday's celestial event. 
The song soared up the music charts during the day and even reached number two on the Apple charts. Wow. Which, by the way, Death and Entertainment is number 17 in America on the stand-up Apple charts. What's going on? Oh, thank you, everybody, for making that happen. Yes, that is the highest we've gotten. Actually, we got to 14 last week. That was the highest. But 17, we'll take it. And we're going to be number one eventually. Yes, just you wait. Total Eclipse of the Heart, the song. Not actually about the solar eclipse. No. It's about love. Yeah. Now I'm only falling apart. And here's another one that's false advertising. Yeah. The Twilight Saga Eclipse. That is also not about a solar eclipse. It's about monster love. It's about a love triangle. Yeah. Between a wolf, a vampire, and a lesbian. Yes. <laughs> Nice. What? <laughs> Bringing in that... pre-written material? <laughs> it's the plot, isn't it? <laughs> it is. Okay. It is. <laughs> well, that was our news segment, and uh, let's get into some unfortunate celebrity deaths here. Okay, RIP. First one, Crazy Cabbie from The Howard Stern Show. Yeah, so this bypassed my radar initially. But he died last week. Wow. Huge uh, part of the Stern show in the early 2000s. Yeah. To mid 2000s in the early serious years. Oh, wow. Are you aware of his stuff? Uh, not really. I know, uh, what is it, Ronnie the limo driver? Mm hmm. So there was a limo driver and a cabbie, I guess. Yeah. You were more of a Howard guy. I was an Opie and Anthony fan. Yep. So I didn't really know many more people other than like high pitched Eric and uh Beetlejuice really. who you met you met high pitched Eric on the streets of New York when I moved there in 2008 he was just walking down the street and I was like are you high pitched Eric and he was like yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you imagine if he was like yeah it's me <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so he was a friend of Kane the radio star he goes by Kane I'm Ooh. sure you've heard of him. Kane. No. no. Okay, well. I know Kane from the WWE. <laughs> and But yeah, Howard Stern is really where most people know him. He started out in Minnesota on the radio, and you're going to love this. He got in trouble. He got fired from his radio gig for a prank, much like Opie and Anthony style. Ah. You know what his prank was? What? He <laughs> He did this bit where he went and knocked on Brett Favre's hotel room. And then he said when the door was opened, because he pretended to be a staff member, yeah. that Brett Favre was cheating on his wife. <laughs> there was another girl there. But here's the catch. It was all made up. Wow. But people believed him, and it backfired, and he was let go. So that was his regular radio job. And then... It Minnesota. Okay, and then Howard was like, get over here. Yeah, then, well, not exactly. No, he had his own thing going. Like I said, he was um, doing stuff with Kane, the radio personality. Sure. And then Howard Stern, because he was on the East Coast by then, got on Howard's radar. The first time most people remember him is 9 11. He oh, was wow. a big part of the famous 9 11 broadcast. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. But I'm... And that's where his nickname solidified because he was driving a cab around the city and he was reporting what he was seeing that day, which a lot of people heard the news from Cabby's mouth that day because wow. they were listening to Howard Stern live. Holy and shit. And you couldn't get a lot of details. Right. And after that, okay, this brings us actually to our clip. So. <laughs> He was a shit talker, really good radio. He yeah. had a feud with Stuttering John. This was in 2002. Mm -hmm. And so they <laughs> orchestrated this boxing match between Cabby and Stuttering John. Wow. And here's a compilation of that whole experience. Okay. <laughs> Buckle up for this. Yeah, the actual event was held at the Taj Mahal, and there may or may not be a cameo appearance from Trump. Oh, wow. At some point. Okay. Go on sale at 7.30 this morning. Uh, that means they're on sale already a half hour. I understand a 1,000 of the seats are gone already. Already? You Come must on, get in quick. 
Uh, tickets are 100 bucks. The reason they're 100 bucks, we're going to take all the money, we're going to give it to Cabby, and we're giving it to John. They're getting all the money. Yeah, it's not for us. It ain't for us. We only like got twenty five hundred. This isn't about the money for me. It never oh, was. here we go. No, did, did I? You not, never asked for a dime. I never asked for a dime. So you're all about the money, and I know that. <laughs> like I said, I'm going to finish my statement from before. I hope you guys taught him some heart, because that's one thing I have that I know he doesn't have. Yeah, okay. He's never walked a mile in my shoes. He can say whatever he wants about me, uh, but until you've it done, does, wait, wait, it does me, take heart to get banged by a guy. Let me, let me tell finish, you. Let me finish. Until you've seen and done what I've done and scrapped yeah. all my freaking life to get where I'm at, you. He was honest to a fault. And so he told Howard one day on the air that he once took it in the ass from a guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> so then they always called him gay after that. <laughs> well, but yeah. he had girlfriends. and Yeah. <laughs> but that's where John's getting that from. Oh, boy. You have no idea. Okay. You've ridden his coattails to where yeah. you're at. Just I'm like not- you're riding Kane's coattails, which is why Kane's not even here. Kane's not even here to support blah, you. Blah, blah, blah. You're the dumbest you guy alive. You don't know what I asked for. You what don't know what I asked You don't know my deal. Do you what a stupid ass Morozak, Moronzak, whatever you call yourself. All right, here it is. Here it is. Mozozak. What the hell are you? Come on, Cabby. No, 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 Kick his ass, Seabass. It looks like him. Yeah. Guys, no. Oh, will you no, get no, me? Stop. No. Stop. Stop. Guys, easy. Stop. 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 Hey, we're on the air. We're live from the Trump Taj Mahal yeah. for the, what are we calling this? The brawl from the Taj Mahal. The junkie versus the flunky. The junkie versus the flunky. No, oh, what's up, Howard? How you been? How you doing, Beetle? Good what, to see you. Good to see you. Who's going to win the fight tonight? Oh, I'm Papa Cabby. How you been? Good to see you. Cabby, Cabby, how you been? Good to see you. Yeah. Crowd on their feet. You ready, Howard? I'm ready, baby. Let's roll. Let's do it. <laughs> Boom. Okay, so I've never seen this. My bet is on the cabbie. Okay, how much you want to bet? <laughs> a dollar. Okay. <laughs> oh, Here we go. Nice. Round one underway. Oh. Big right hand by stuttering John, and they lock up. Cabby pounding him to the midsection. Uh-oh. John needs to escape. John with an overhand right. John, and another. Stop, stop. Stop, Cabby stop, puts stop. it below the belt, a right hand below the belt, and the referee has to step what? in. John going right at him, rabbit stop, punching stop, to the back stop, of Cabby's stop. head. Right, and a sucker punch by Crazy stop, Cabby. Stop, stop. All three judges are unanimous. The winner, stu, stu, stuttering. Wow. Yeah. 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 Everybody, 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 I told you, Robin. <laughs> I told you guys, I kicked his ass, I told you. The guy beat me. I, I I respect all the judges that are here. I think I won the fight. No, dude, I ain't going to shake your hand. Oh, You're not going to shake John's blood. hand? Oh, bad, bad sports. Hey, Howard. 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 Howard, Howard. Yeah. I'm at ringside. It's Gary. I'm over here on the side of the ring speaking to the helicopter for reaction to the fight. The man that made it happen, Donald Trump. Donald Where Trump, I think, oh thought Cabby was going to win. Thank um, you. Oh, there he is. Donald, what do you think? Well, you know, I just met Cabby for the first time, and he's really a great guy. But I have to say, John, you did a hell of a job. He won the fight. That, that fight was. <laughs> Dude, I've met 10 douchebags like you my whole life, and none of you do shit. <laughs> okay, so I have to wow. explain a little something. This is five years later, this next clip. Yeah. But in between, you know how I told you Cabby was always honest to a fault? Yeah. Well, one day, because he was in the Gulf War, and he said that, He's going to pay taxes when the government cures his Gulf War syndrome. Okay. But the thing is, everyone is well aware that for that boxing match, he was paid a lot of money, over $100,000. Wow. So he says that on the air. Well, an investigator from the IRS was listening. Oh, of course. And then got an investigation going. And guess what? Cabby spent a year in jail no over shit. that over that one comment. Wow. Yeah. So this God. is five years later. This is about a year after he was released from jail. It was a whole <laughs> ordeal. And so now he's back on the show and surely yeah. it, it was <laughs> part of the Stern staff, the news department. He has a feud with Cabby. So they're bringing up the boxing match here. Oh, and- my God. Here we go. <laughs> You just talk. You run your mouth. So that's all you do. So, so, so let's, shut up. Let's let's do something. Me and you will just go take a walk down the yeah. street as non employees. It's, it's been a while. It's been a while. He looks like he ate the old cabbie. Yeah, and when he got, he can't uh, gain weight in jail. 
<laughs> that's also what's really funny is no he the day he he actually went straight to the Stern Show studio from jail. This is the day. No, oh, okay. no, this is about a year later. Oh, okay. God, there's actually another thing that's gonna blow your mind. <laughs> But first, he came back looking really good, like he had lost a ton of weight. He was yeah. spelt. Wow. Well, he gained it all back, obviously, in a short amount of time. Jeez. And the funniest thing is you'll hear him try to promote this weight loss supplement oh, in this very segment. And Gary starts yelling at him like, I told you not to bring that up. <laughs> and everyone is like, how can you re- promote this weight loss supplement when you're fat as fuck? <laughs> and then one more thing. He... <laughs> incredible (laughs) somewhere along the line he filmed a porno in howard's old studio at k-rock oh my god and the porno was with ron jeremy him and ron jeremy fucked each other no it was uh (laughs) they had women there Yeah, yeah yeah having sex in howard's chair oh no and howard did not know about this till after the fact oh he it was while they were like actually working yes. there. <laughs> Cabby did it after hours because he had a key to the studio. So Howard is still pissed at him here about that. Oh. And so Cabby's trying to apologize. But also the video it has never seen the light of day this porno. Oh my God. Come on. And it <laughs> it includes such things as they used to have this OJ mask in the Howard studio. Well, let's just say they put that mask to good use. Oh, gee. Yeah, let's just say OJ was a little hungry. Oh boy, that night. <laughs> oh, so anyway, let's continue with the clip. Oh, well, since oh, you've gotten your ass kicked by someone who works for the show, so yeah, maybe oh, we should yeah, do it in a fight. boxing match. See, yeah. I, I'm not a boxer. No See, shit, I'm I've a seen fucking paratrooper. Lost. <laughs> oh, and I lost him. Yeah. I, I tend to disagree. Did I not win the stuttering? You John always fight? disagree. No, you always no, disagree. Yeah, I a decision, but what'd you tell me the day I went to jail off the air? You said you won that. I fight. never said that. <laughs> oh, oh, my God. Won that fight. I never. Cabby, that's the listen. The chip talking. in my head recorded that oh, shit. Good. So <laughs> play it back. Right. I don't recall. I I didn't come here for all this shit. And yeah, you know what? I do have things going on because. I am a go-getter. I am a fucking <laughs> seller. Okay? Listen, I got oh, something man. big going on right now. What really? Is that? Yeah. It's it's called I-57 Ignite, baby. What is that? It's an energy Did pill. I tell you not to fucking promote that here? Did you go on the fucking <laughs> web and tell Joey Boots that I was going to do it? No, I didn't go on the web at they, all. Oh, yeah, you did. I oh, don't go I'm on sorry. the web. No, I'm sorry. Joey Boots went on the web with your words when we had an agreement. We had a verbal agreement. You we had a verbal agreement. You would that I'm not, shit on the air. It ain't shit. We have a sponsor. I get that. Cabby, I got to go. This is. It's great to see you. Howard, Feel I miss free you. free to come back anytime. You don't have to miss us. You can come in and see us. Wow. That gives you a taste of Cabby. That's incredible. Anderson is saying Cabby used to live across the street from him in Staten Island. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. And (laughs) the relationship did not last long after that Mm. because it had to do with that I-57 Ignite he's trying to promote. (laughs) Well, the next time he came in, he got even fatter. And so Ralph Sorella, RIP, called in and was like, how can Cabby be promoting that? He's the fattest he's ever been. This is ridiculous. <laughs> and so then Cabby tried to sue the Howard Stern show. Oh, my saying God. Saying that they tarnished the brand's reputation. <laughs> and, of course, Howard was done with him after that. Yeah, of course. And Cabby basically disappeared from the public consciousness after that. His health really deteriorated. It's sad. Damn. Happens to a lot of vets. And it's, you know, it just sucks. Yeah. But he seemed in good spirits. I saw a couple of somewhat recent interviews and he still had his humor about him. He couldn't really walk anymore at the end. And Oof. yeah, he passed away at the age of 55. Oof. So Anderson said he used to buy Coke from the Albanian deli next door. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't yeah. doubt it. What a character. <laughs> you have to admit he was very entertaining. Oh, absolutely. He made what you call good radio. Yeah. It's unbelievable that he sued for tarnishing, you know, Howard tarnishing a brand. That's all Howard did to anybody. That right. The show he made oh, everyone look bad. Exactly. <laughs> that was the fun of it. He was, what do you call it? Uh, what do you, uh, he imploded basically his career. Yeah, the jail thing was awful for his career because he obviously he was he lose a year mm. when he could have been doing radio gigs. Yeah, and then also he 
was self-destructive because Howard is a good person to know. Yeah. And you can't try to sue someone that's trying to help you. Yeah. If you had a sense of humor about everything and like kind of was like if you were more self-deprecating, you could really capitalize on the type of show he was presenting to his audience and presenting to people at scale. Yeah. Um, yeah, people who got too upset didn't last very long around there. And in some ways, there's that fearlessness about him that I admire being able to do that, to bite the hand that feeds like that. Yeah. But I guess Howard, he felt, wasn't helping him enough after the jail sentence. Yeah. So I don't know. Mm. And Cabby was a huge part of Howard Stern's life before that. He was there the night that Howard met his current wife, Beth. Wow. Like he socialized with Howard. That's crazy. This isn't just some random whack packer here. Right. Huge part of the show if you listened in those years. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. So R.I.P. Crazy Cabbie. Real name Lee Morozak. Yeah. <laughs> R.I.P. And R.I.P. to our next uh, person that passed away this past week. Uh, Cole Brings Plenty from the Yellowstone spinoff 1923. He was found dead in Kansas. Uh, just days after being reported missing. Um, and his dad is on the show Yellowstone. Oh, no kidding. Or uncle. Okay. Yeah, his uncle. Yeah. Uh, apparently he was the target of a domestic violence investigation in Kansas. Um, so apparently he had a fight with his partner and then they were looking for him, couldn't find him. And then the Johnson County Sheriff's Office said on social media that deputies found the body of a 27-year-old male in a wooded area on April 5th. Uh, detectives were dispatched at 11.45 a.m. local time to investigate an empty car on Homestead Lane. And uh, so there's no details out about the cause of death, but essentially they found him alone in his car, mm. passed away. So we really don't know how yet. No. Uh, two days earlier, he was charged in a nearby county with aggravated burglary, domestic battery, and criminal restraint. Hmm. Well, he was charged and then an arrest warrant was issued. So they were trying to find him, you know, to arrest him for those things. Yeah. And uh, yeah. Ah, so he, it, the walls were closing in. Yeah, exactly. Mm, that's sad. And, you know, it's. Well, I mean, it sounds like he wasn't up to. He was up to no good, as they say. Yeah, exactly. Um, apparently, it says here on CBS News, they say traffic cameras showed him leaving the city immediately after the incident, traveling southbound on. Uh, highway 59 uh, authority said he was driving a 2005 Ford Explorer bearing a Kansas license plate. And here we have a little news clip. Yeah. To this area late this morning on the reports of an unoccupied vehicle. When they got here, they checked the area and in the woods, they found a dead body. Johnson County, Kansas Sheriff's deputies identified the body as actor Cole brings plenty. The 27 year old was best known for his role in 1923, a spinoff of the popular show Yellowstone. Brings Plenty was reported missing on Easter Sunday from Lawrence. Police there were searching for him in relation to a domestic violence case from last weekend. Now, a death investigation is underway after deputies cleared the scene near 200th and Homestead Lane Friday afternoon. Mo Brings Plenty, another well known actor from the Yellowstone series, and Cole's uncle posted a statement signed by his family on Instagram. It thanked everyone for the prayers and help they received while searching for Cole. The statement reads in part, I learned this week how many people knew the goodness in Cole's heart and loved him. Peyton Headley, KNBC 9 News. Police aren't saying how he died. The investigation into his death continues. Anyone with information about this case is asked to call the Johnson County, Kansas Sheriff's Department at the number on your screen, 913-782-0720. Well, that seems weird <clears throat> that um, they would ask for more information because, you know, when someone's found in the woods next to an empty car, generally, and they had some trouble in the days before, uh, generally it's by their own doing. Maybe it wasn't. Well, that's a very interesting turn of events. This is a that's mystery. Yeah. Um, yeah, because he was charged with burglary. Um Aggravated burglary. So Cole brings plenty because he steals plenty. Hello. And we bring plenty of stories for you. Yeah, we bring plenty of bad news. 
Uh, and his dad is Joe Brings Plenty. Yeah. Now so people are Mo- craving good and plenty. <laughs> there's Mo J- Brings Plenty, Joe M- Brings Plenty. <laughs> <laughs> They're, you know, you don't want to mix them up. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, so RIP to Cole Brings Plenty. Yes. That'll be interesting to turn out if it's, uh, you know, not <laughs> plenty, self-inflicted. Plenty more to come. Plenty more to come. Uh, the last death we're bringing you this week is Curb Your Enthusiasm. Mm, yes. It made its curtain call yesterday. Yes. Or two nights ago. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen all the way up to it, so I didn't watch the last season. Uh, but a lot of people are saying it's very good. Yeah, it's not its strongest season by any stretch of the imagination, but satisfying. Yeah, I would say so. There was a delay there, but it's not even close to the heights of the original seasons. I would say. Yeah, it's still good. Of course, it's like seeing old friends when you follow a show for a while. Yeah. It and then there was a callback to the Seinfeld finale. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah. So nice. Larry's on trial because. He was caught in Georgia bringing water to voters in line and snacks. And I guess that's illegal. (laughs) So then he was put on trial. Uh And in the final episode of Seinfeld, if you'll recall. Everybody came out against them. Yes, they're on trial too for the (laughs) breaking the Good Samaritan law. (laughs) Because they made fun of John Pinnett being fat. Yeah. Yep. And so this one, I don't know. Do you want to see a couple clips? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I got them right here. Spoiler alert. Yeah, if you don't want to know what happens, please look away. (laughs) First off, though, I want to play a clip of, I thought this was the best part of the whole episode. Oh, hold on. I clicked the wrong area. Yeah, so this is when uh, Larry David arrives in Georgia for the trial. And he has a lot of goodwill towards him. Goodwill towards men. Yes. Okay, and I'm just pulling up this file here. I pulled up the file on my computer, not StreamYard. Isn't that crazy? Hey, you're nuts, dude. (laughs) Let's get nuts. (laughs) You want to get nuts? Oh, Oh my. Oh, I keep. A ball is thrown at his head. <laughs> my gosh, Preston, come here. I. Oh. There you go. Oh my gosh, Preston, come here. I am so sorry, hey. sir. No. Hey, that's mine. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, Preston, what do we say when we hurt somebody? It, it's okay. It didn't hurt me at all. No, no, no. Just one no, more second. No. no, no, no. Come on. We just talked yeah. about this. Okay, yeah. we say okay. I'm. I, I, I... Uh... Sorry. Sorry. I'm... Sorry. Please don't help him out. I want him to learn this. Okay. okay. All right. Oh, no, no, no. We're good. No, Thank oh, you. we're not done yet. We got to learn this lesson here because this hey, is a really hey, important lesson. We don't have to learn the lesson. But I'll tell you what. If you want me to participate in this lesson. Yeah. Okay. Here's my two cents. Okay, great. Listen to the man. I'm 76 years old and I have never learned a lesson in my entire life. <laughs> oh! Do you think that's helping? I do. That's who we don't want to be. <laughs> I do. Okay. Come on. Let's go. That's great. That's <laughs> the best note he could have gone out on. Yeah. And then if you want to see a little of the Seinfeld part. Yeah, let's do it. Okay. So this is the part that calls back to his other famous finale. And it's interesting. Curb ended up lasting well over 100 episodes, like yeah. 12 seasons or more. And when it started, it did not seem like it was going to do that. No, it didn't. There were so many weird episodes. Oh, yeah. That you were like, you know, anybody watching would be like, all right, this will kind of fizzle out. Like, especially after, uh, what's it called? Bob Odenkirk when he was the porn star and he's putting hot sauce on his finger and shoving wow. up people's ass. Wow. <laughs> Hard for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, all right, now what, what, where are we going? What is happening here? And at that time, most series lasted about five seasons. Yeah. So that's what Curb was planning to do. And somehow it just went on and on because he also took a lot of breaks. Mm. Didn't they already have one finale and then said, screw that, we're coming back again? Season five. Oh, wow. So he, that was a long time he ago. He dies 
in that <laughs> finale. But I think then, I've only seen the first three seasons. But then it comes back to life. That's awesome. And after that, it led to, you know, that Seinfeld season where they revived the oh, show. That was so yeah. funny. Yeah. And then the one with Michael J. Fox was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> and he ends up in France at the end of it. Oh, he did a whole season in New York. Yeah. And they did the Bill Buckner joke. Mm hmm. A lot of good stuff. So I'm glad they didn't end it in 2005. Yeah. Oh, man. Super Dave. Oh, my <laughs> God. The jokes. Not... You want to hear a joke? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> that's that's a great moment. You're in the sink. <laughs> Are you afraid to say it? <laughs> yeah, on a okay. live? Yeah. <laughs> um, you speaking of Marty Funkhauser, big part of the show, big part of the episode that you did a story on. Hmm. Uh, what's his name? Juan Catalan. Juan Catalan. Yeah. yeah, that was a Funkhauser episode. Oh, that's Remember, right. He was he, Funkhauser had good seats at Dodger Stadium. He is so he is ingrained into the Juan Catalan story. Yeah, and Larry David wanted to sit next to him, but he was holding the seat open for his dead dad. Yeah, He's like no one's sitting there. <laughs> <laughs> so good, and he died in 2017. Yeah. Albert Brooks's brother. Yes, which is an episode you covered. Park your carcass. Their father died yeah. on stage at the Beverly Hilton. Yeah, so Bob Einstein, A.K. Super Dave Osborne, and then his brother is Albert Brooks, and their dad was Park your carcass, who died while giving a killer roast. Yeah, killed himself. Yeah, you can go back. <laughs> That's like our third episode if you want to go back and listen to that. Exactly. Zach thinks it's another false finale, and they'll come back in a couple of years. See, that wouldn't surprise me. Yeah. And Richard Lewis was in the finale. Wow. And I hate to say it, but he looked like he had three feet in the grave. Ooh, jeez. But still good to see him. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here's a portion of the curb finale that calls back to Seinfeld. Yeah. Hey, look at this. I had Mr. Me Too. Hey, what do you call that? It's a pants tent. Pants tent. Yeah, I got a five inch bunch up here. Pants Callback. Tent. He has the very first episode of Curb Your Enthusiasm. That's the name of it, Pants Tent. Yeah. Here. You know something? I stopped wearing corduroys because of that. Yeah, I'm wearing corduroys now. Yeah. yeah. And women, they don't know what a pants tent is. They can lead to misunderstandings, they get confused. And this is where you think it's going to end because that's where Seinfeld ended. Yeah. It ended with the four of them in a jail cell just doing a call back to their first episode talking about George's button on his shirt. Yeah. Hey, somebody's here to see you. All right, hey! Chuckles, let's get you out of here. Larry! Hey! What? We went out on top! Yeah. What are, you, what, are you, what are you talking about? It's over. Mistrial declared, sentence thrown out. You're done. How about that sport fans uh dave oz i completely agree i've been listening to the curb your enthusiasm podcast as well he says great podcast running now with jeff and Susie, going way back and talking about each episode of season one and beyond yes but they haven't gotten past season one yet i love it because i i didn't keep up as much in the later years but for sure the first four, uh probably four or five seasons oh wow so this is the podcast for me yeah. and bob odenkirk was on actually talking about Bow! porno gill oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> jeff garland not a great podcaster though hey very entertaining guy very funny guy and yeah. i i like him on the podcast except he says, by the way, every other word. Mm. Susie will start to say something. Like, by the way. Yeah, just say something. Uh, I was going. By the way. Uh, <laughs> hold on. Hold the thought. By the way. <laughs> Besides that, it's a great listen. Yeah. Come on. Uh, you're crazy. You don't want to end up like this. Nobody wants to see it. Trust me. <laughs> Breathe the free air, young man. Please. Oh my god. This is how we should have ended the finale. Oh my god, you're right. How did we not think of that? Ah. Ah. There you go. 
Jim Vim said, what if Kramer showed up and busted Larry out of jail? <laughs> that would have been if, epic. If he had a racist meltdown. <laughs> He did do Kramer a favor, though, making him part of the Seinfeld reunion that one season. Yeah, and that was a comeback for him because that wasn't that long after the the Laugh Factory incident. And there was racial overtones in that. Oh, there were. They yeah. they lampooned it in yeah. that show <laughs> with what's his name? Um, um, JB Smoove. Yeah, JB Smoove. Yeah. So yeah, there's the. What'd you think? I thought it was great, fitting. And then for your viewing pleasure i thought we would revisit not only a second of the seinfeld finale but also jerry seinfeld's infamous sit down with larry king ah. y'all ready for this to me that button is in the worst possible spot really oh, oh yeah right. The second button is the key button. It literally makes or breaks the shirt. Look at it. It's too high. It's a no man's land. Haven't we had this conversation before? You think? Lasted how long? Nine years. 180 episodes. You gave it up, right? I did. They didn't cancel you. You canceled them. You're not, You're not familiar with this? It's common knowledge, Larry. Look at his face. He's so upset. Like, are you <laughs> kidding me, Larry? You don't know? They didn't cancel you. You canceled them. You're not aware of this? <laughs> no, I'm asking you. You think I got canceled? Are you under the impression I, I that I got canceled? Have I hurt you, Jerry? I thought don't, that was pretty well documented. Don't, don't this is, most a, shows is this still down. CNN? Don't most shows go down a little? Most people do also. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, well, I, I went off the air. I was the number one show on television, Larry. Larry? You were Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> Jewish guy, Brooklyn. Yes. Okay. 75 well, million viewers okay. last okay. episode. What? Tell me, take it so bad. Well, that's a, that's a big difference between being canceled and being number one. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I was in the B movie. <laughs> he mentions B movie. Not? No, he doesn't. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> we'll be right back. Jeez. B movie opens. <laughs> Be movie open. A resume in here for B me. movie opens Larry tomorrow. Go over. I, 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 we'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so. That's too good. Too fucking. Larry King has a few that are priceless. Yeah. Because remember the one with Travis Barker. Yeah. Where he's like, "No, you survived the plane crash, right? I, you didn't die, did you?" <laughs> <laughs> He's like, um, yeah, me and DJ AM. Yeah, we, 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 we survived. Oh my God. <laughs> Larry! B movie! How's it B movie, Larry? <laughs> Do you know who I am? Oh, yeah. Wow. So, Curb, thank you for all the laughs. Yeah. RIP. RIP to Funkhauser yeah. and Richard Lewis. Mm -hmm. A lot going down with curbed but uh many years of enjoyable television and possibly more years to come yeah we don't know we don't now moving on to the next segment we've got ai george carlin coming back there was a new development in Ooh. that recently ai george carlin cannot be <laughs> swept away <laughs> cannot will not go away uh recently uh, last week, George Collins' estate settled a lawsuit against the podcasters uh, over the AI special that they put out. If anyone doesn't remember, uh, the podcast Dudesy put out an AI George Carlin special. And, and they presented it like this was just something they prompted into chat GPT and then it just spit out this brilliant special, right. which it turned out was not the case. Like it was some kind of thought or ai experiment yeah exactly um it was created by will sasso and chad kultgen and chad's the one who was the it was his brainchild so what he's been doing is saying you know ai is this crazy technology and all you have to do is just put in this little prompt and boom you got this thing and we talked about this on one of the lives and we listened to a little bit of it and to me it was way too obvious that he had written it with just an ai voice encoder that was speech to text or text to speech 
So he had written this entire thing and then did it, exported it in the voice of George Carlin via AI. Because it was interesting thoughts and ideas, but not necessarily that entertaining. Yeah. About gun control and not, nothing very funny either. Right. And yet topics that Carlin very much would have covered. Yeah. Just didn't. It was like Carlin light. And it was very similar to the Tom Brady um, AI special that they put out as well. Which was very funny. It was funny because it's like, it's literally their voice. Yeah. And it's a joke. It's a written sketch at that point. It was very, it was written down to the word. Yeah. It was completely predetermined and it was all written by Chad. But then why not make the Carlin one better? It worked for the Tom Brady one. Yeah. But the Carlin one was dry. It was not edgy. But that's kind of how Carlin was. Oh, come on. I'm not saying edgy. Oh, you are. I started my sentence before you said edgy. You're full of it. But, I mean, let's be real. A lot of George Carlin was clapter. It wasn't always yeah. laughter. It was like, oh, I agree with this point. Okay, yeah. I'll give you some clap there. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so a settlement was reached between the estate of George Carlin, a.k.a. Kelly Carlin, and the makers of a podcast who used the generative AI intelligence to impersonate the late stand-up comics voice and style for an unauthorized special. Because it was an hour. Mm-hmm. An hour of jokes in the voice of George Carlin and pretty much what they agreed to do was take it down and never advertise it ever again. Oh, that's the settlement. That was the settlement. Yeah. Nothing paid. Yeah, no, uh, the, the deal, uh, an injunction will be entered barring further use of the video, which has already been taken down and that it was made in violation of the comics rights. Okay. Um, Further terms of the agreement weren't disclosed, so they might've had to pay out a little bit. This is like when they gave a vacuum to Fred Astaire for that commercial. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Um, And it is Hollywood reporter here says the settlement marks what's believed to be the first resolution to a lawsuit over the misappropriation of a celebrity's voice or likeness using AI tools. Um, Which is crazy because SAG-AFTRA was trying to fight the studios on them saying we can use your voice and likeness after you die in perpetuity for like a hundred dollars a pop, mm-hmm. which is insane. Uh, oh God. Yeah. So I believe they were able to take that out of the discussion when they, the strike was going on. Mm-hmm. But, um, that's like, well, we'll uh, if you have the family's approval, the estate's approval, yeah. the sky's the limit. Right. That's another scary thing. Because mm-hmm. look at the estate of Peter Cushing. Yeah. Who was in the original Star Wars. And then they brought him back for Rogue One. As a cartoon. And my sister <laughs> looked at me. We went to see it in the theater. She's like, that guy seems familiar. I'm like. Yeah, he was in the original Star Wars, but that's not him. Yeah, he's been dead for 30 years. It's just that <laughs> she had that weird, eerie feeling from the uncanny valley. Yeah. Like, what is this? Exactly. Uh, Kelly Carlin, daughter of George Carlin, said in a statement that this case serves as a warning about the dangers posed by AI technologies and the need for appropriate safeguards, not just for artists and creatives, but for every human on Earth. I thought it would be fun if we listened to our short that we did on Carlin AI. Let's do it. And we give our opinions then, and let's see if we stand by them. Okay. This special is called I'm Glad I'm Dead. His second to last... Here we go. This special is called I'm Glad I'm Dead. His second to last special was called Life is Worth Losing. The title is fairly spot on true i'm sorry it took me so long to come out with new material but i I do have a pretty good excuse i was dead (laughs) the cadence is good but it's still like a little fast it's off so technically it wasn't my fault if you want to blame somebody you're gonna have to blame god it sounds like an impersonator which we all know is not gonna happen people are always thanking god for the good stuff in their lives but somehow they conveniently forget that it's the same god who does all the bad shit too and he does a lot of bad shit clearly no comparison yeah it was in the realm it like, was yeah it had the flavor but this is the real car yeah thank you 
I'm a modern man, a man for the millennium. Digital and smoke free. Nice. All right. I think I stand by that. Yeah, I think so too. Except I probably like it less now than I did then. You like the uh so it's barely in the realm. Mm. It doesn't have his clapter, as you put it. <laughs> Well, Clapter is the response, you know? It wasn't always punchlines that he was throwing out uh, there. Thank you. Um, He's still an all-time great Hall of Famer. First ballot Hall of Famer. I'll go sign up at UCB for comedy school. I don't yeah. get it. Yeah. You, Kyle. You will, you'll get it. You will get it, whether you like it or not. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's it. The I'm also a modern man. <laughs> smoke free <laughs> digital and smoke free <laughs> um yeah so that's it it's in the books that the first ever uh you know lawsuit covering the use of ai unauthorized use of ai to recreate a dead celebrity's voice and likeness is uh you know it's been taken down and is not allowed to be utilized for profit i think i like the outcome yeah, I think so too. But there's going to be way more. Mm -hmm. There just has to. I mean, there is some enter entertaining value to what they were doing. Um, Writing it, though. I think it was under false pretenses, but I feel like everything in entertainment is under false pretenses. True. Um, reality TV is not reality. Are you saying that Burt Kreischer is not always honest about his life? Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I feel like he's too honest about life sometimes. But uh, yes, also not. Okay. <laughs> uh, Anderson says AI is becoming the animated GIF of our era. I like to say GIF, but the... Uh, it's the, GIF. The person who created it called it GIF. So Jiffy like, moms say GIF. Yes. Choosy moms say GIF. Uh, duh. Somebody called Crispin Glover. That's correct. He uh, sued because his likeness was used in Back to the Future 2 or 3? Part 2. Yeah. And um, he got so mad, actually. Can we find that? You know what blew my mind? You know how the dad in the future big part of Back to the Future 2 is upside down? Yeah. Well, Crispin Glover says that that was actually in the original script when he was still a part of it. Oh, really? Most people assumed he was upside down, so you wouldn't be able to tell it wasn't Crispin Glover. Yeah. He gets so mad. But he got um, he got interviewed, and he was like, you know, it's bad acting. <laughs> Not the one where he tried to dropkick David Letterman. Yeah. <laughs> he got mad in another interview? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm talking about the one where he was on acid, remember? Oh, yeah. I remember that. Those are from the E-bombs world days, that clip. Lawsuit against the producers, but new regulations from the Screen Actors Guild to prevent it from ever happening again. So what happened? Crispin Glover refused to reprise his role as George McFly in the sequels to Back to the Future due to a dispute over his salary or ethical concerns about the moral of the movie, depending on which story you believe. Yes, I'm George. George McFly. Unable to come to an agreement with Glover, producers recast the role with Jeffrey Weissman. So far so good, right? Then they covered Weissman in makeup and prosthetics that had been cast from Glover's face in the first movie when they aged him for the scenes when he's older. Weissman became a Crispin Glover doppelganger, basically trading on the actor's appearance without actually using him. After Glover's lawsuit, which he won, the Screen Actors Guild made it a rule that no actor's likeness could be stolen in such a way again. Mm. It was bad acting, bad choices. I can't find that, but I will for the for the uh, for the internet and social media. Okay, great. <laughs> Maybe he didn't like the upside down stuff, and that's why he pursued the lawsuit. It was bad choices to put me upside down. Now oh, you got so mad. Uh, yeah, let's turn this show upside down with okay. the next segment. And that is Angie Harmon. Oof. This is a crazy one. Wow. Uh, Get nobody... ready. Uh, trigger warning. Yeah. Or dead... should I say tigger warning? Dead dog coming. Oof. And we're not talking about Christina Parcell. Yeah. Uh, Instacart driver fatally shoots dog belonging, belonging to Angie Harmon. The man told police he did so in self-defense. 
And Harmon says he was nonchalant <clears throat> uh, and unapologetic. Oh, my God. And I guess there's a reason for that. Yeah. Angie Harmon, she's known for roles in Law and & Order and Rizzoli and & Isles. It's not in the screen, by the way. Maybe I don't want it to be. Oh, okay. How about that? There's a method to your madness. How about that? <laughs> yeah, she was in a lot of stuff. She was in a movie called Good Advice with Charlie Sheen. Oh, so she probably got some bad advice. Yeah. Um, Crisco. <laughs> Oh, all right. We'll you talking about Corey Haim again? Just leave it right there. I okay. didn't say anything. I just said Crisco. That's all. Um, so Angie Harmon said on Monday that an Instacart driver fatally shot one of her dogs during a weekend stop at her home. And this was in North Carolina. Uh, police confirmed parts of her story and said that no arrests have been made. No charges have been recommended and further witnesses will not be sought after. Hmm. So essentially what happened is the Instacart driver alleged that the dog attacked him. And okay. we didn't know. So they put it out in the news without confirming whether or not the driver was in fact attacked by the dog. And, um, you know, it's pretty much just Angie's word against his. It has now come out that the dog actually did attack him. Hmm. And then, because all she said was he got out of his car, delivered the food, and then shot our dog. Our ring camera was charging in the house, which he saw, and then knew he wasn't being recorded. The police let him go because he claimed self-defense. He did not have a scratch or a bite on him, nor were his pants torn. And then he told her, I hope this doesn't affect the star rating. Yeah. <laughs> well, it sounds like he doesn't need the star rating because the dog did, in fact, bite him. But didn't Instacart fire him? Uh, let me see. I believe they let him go. Well, they usually shoot first and ask questions later. No pun intended or pun intended. I don't know. Um, Instacart driver confirmed dog bite. The DailyMail.com said Angie Harmon's dog did bite Instacart driver, according to police, to say they will not press charges following Easter weekend shooting. Woof. Woof. Arf. Uh, he did have bite marks on his body, oh. as seen by police. So, yeah, that must have been a bad bite. Mm. So North Carolina is conceal and carry, right? Uh, yeah. And it's an open carry. Yeah, open carry. That's yeah. what I meant. Um, I imagine that would be very useful if you're an Uber driver or Instacart deliverer. Yeah. To be able to shoot your customers <laughs> and their dogs uh, when they're annoying. The Instacart shopper was, in fact, working under another person's name, and they will not. No, neither of them will be able to work for the service. Wait, another name? What's uh, up with that? So it's like you working on an app, and then I show up in your place because you're already doing another job somewhere. But why would I send you to do my Instacart purchase? So you get a cut of it, and I do the job for you. Actually, I like the sound of that. Yeah. It's just as long as I don't shoot any dogs. Right. Under your name. Yeah, that person pretty much betrayed their friend then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean. Could you imagine? Hey, how did the Instacart shift go? Oh, not bad, except, well, I shot Angie Harmon's dog. <laughs> how was your day? How about that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, she really she posted it on social Jesus. media. Um, and the Baja men tweeted. <laughs> <laughs> she let her dogs out. <laughs> oof, 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 oof. Hey, yippee yo. What kind of dog was it? Do yes. we know? Shannon. Oh, man. Sorry, Shannon. This is not a story for you. Oh, my God. Shannon, I didn't even think. Yeah. We did give a warning. We did give a warning. So she might Shannon, come here. back in two minutes. Yeah. We're almost done with this. <laughs> and don't listen to the Rose Petal murder episode. Yep. Sorry, Emily. And sorry, Shannon. Oh, oh and this God. is in your state, too. You're in North Carolina. Yeah, no, it's Jeez. it's awful. Uh, it is crazy, though, that she was so aggressive and went out on social media to say. 
his dog, you know, was killed because this guy just wanted to do it pretty much. Mm -hmm. I mean, she said her ring doorbell was charging and he knew that. And it's like, okay, you're putting a lot of uh, thought into this person's intentions. And you had to have known. I mean, I would find it very. Uh, I love dogs. I lived with three pit bulls for a few years and they were the sweetest uh, dogs in the world. It is all about the owner. It's owner so, or breed all day. Angie Harmon needs to take accountability if that dog attacked, because that's what sets up these fuzzy situations where yeah. people are afraid for their lives. Uh, you know, they don't know what the dog's going to do. Yeah. That's up to the owner to make sure that doesn't happen. Yep. Yeah. Angie Harmon wrote to the man who took Ollie away from us. Your actions are despicable and inexcusable. You've not only robbed us of a beloved member of our family, but you've also traumatized us beyond measure. And our food was cold. The fact that someone could commit such a heartless act is beyond comprehension to me. And I'm devastated that I didn't get to say goodbye to him. Um, uh, honey walnut shrimp from Panda Express at room temperature. <laughs> this is bullshit. Yeah, they she had to. I don't know how the dog got out. Um, she had to have heard the they, dog growling but and they ordered, someone screaming. They ordered the food, too. They know that a delivery driver is coming. Yeah. Put the dogs away. Not saying, you know, she's at fault, but I understand it's a very traumatizing thing for that to happen. But you had to have heard some sort of commotion going on that led to that. And if not, the house is huge. And, you know, I don't know. And if the guy didn't have a gun, which I wouldn't have had one. Yeah. What am I just attacked? Like, I, I don't know. Like, it's a sad situation, you know? Yeah. Like, what are the odds that he would have the gun to protect himself like that on that delivery? Yeah. Jeez. Both sides are smell a little fishy. Yeah. To me. Yep. Yeah, I agree. There's got to be some sort of uh, blame to be had on both sides. Emily is giving her dog a belly rub right now. Oh, good. Oh, Beagle Dachshund. Oh, what a what a cute dog. <laughs> Even though I haven't seen a picture, I can imagine. <laughs> we can only imagine. Uh, yeah, so RIP to the dog. Yeah. Little Ollie. Yep. Gone too soon. Mm hmm. On to the next. Never too soon for our next story. Never too soon for and the next story. And this does not involve dogs. No. Well, not, not literal dogs. Yeah, it's just a fucking dog of a person. Ooh, so we're back to quiet on set. Mm hmm. Where do we even start with this? Uh, yeah, there's a, a fifth episode. There is. I didn't see yet. I did. You did? I didn't even know it was out. And I have a couple of clips from it. Ooh. So the show was so massively popular that they rushed a fifth episode out. There mm. were four to begin with. They did the same thing with Tiger King. Do you remember that? When Tiger King premiered, it was huge. Oh, yeah. So then Joel McHale hosted this weird like interview episode yeah yeah that's what this was <laughs> oh really yeah it was just what do you think what do you think what do yeah you think? time to get more money i guess we could jump right into it um this is a clip of drake bell starts with drake bell okay talking about the reaction and this is interesting in this one it's hosted by soledad o'brien mm. And in this clip, Drake Bell is, I don't know. It sounds like he's trying to excuse everything he's ever done since meeting Brian Peck. Yeah, because, because of Brian Peck. Yeah, he's had some allegations against him where he got arrested for uh, sexting on, with minors. Sexting minors, yeah. He said he thought she was, you know, of age, but she ended up being 17 and got arrested, pled guilty. There's even rumors this guy did this whole thing on TikTok with all this evidence yeah, showing that he might have been dating a 16 year old as recent as 2021. Yeah. I don't know. And then there's a lot of his ex-girlfriends came out that said he was physically abusive. Right. And then one strange thing is one of his ex-girlfriends who said he was abusive. 
she said it in a very particular way. She made a statement saying something along the lines of, just imagine the worst verbal abuse possible. That's what he said to me. Yeah. And Drake Bell worded his abuse the exact same way, same way on Quiet on Set. Yeah. I don't know what that means exactly, except it's pretty obvious that he borrowed. It's just weird. He borrowed from someone that's accusing him of abuse and then put that into his own abuse story. Yeah. Or he said that to her and she took that from him. Okay. When she was like, you know, what happened to you? And he's like, just picture the worst thing that you could possibly imagine. And then she beat him to the punch and said it publicly, publicly first. Yeah, it's possible. Okay. So we got a Drake Bell supporter here. Yeah, no, not really. Apologist. <laughs> All right. So here's from Quiet on the Set episode five, Drake Bell. Things happening in my personal life that uh, were really difficult. And, and I started to just kind of, I guess, spiral is the best way to. Mm. Yeah. So he sort of sweeps everything under the rug, though. Mm -hmm. He views it as like a bankruptcy, like, OK, whatever. I'm just throwing everything into the bankruptcy, <laughs> all those cars I bought. And yeah. so any bad things he's done as an adult. It's yeah, it's obviously because of the Nickelodeon stuff. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So life isn't quite that convenient. Yeah. But look. Of course, it had a huge part. To oh, of course. A lot. But yeah, you can't use it as a get out of jail free card for any no, thing you've ever done. Which he's sort of doing that and it's sort of working for him. Yeah. The most disturbing thing to me is when people who are abused grow to abuse. Yeah. And, you know, it doesn't sound like he's abusing in the same way because. No. Who, it's, who could? It's Yeah. yeah exactly. Who could be that prolific and evil as Brian Peck? Yeah. But the fact that, you know, you know how shitty it feels to, you know, be treated a certain way and then to treat people in uh, a violent and aggressive manner is not OK. Right. I, th I think it's one of the most despicable things uh, anyone can do. Yeah. So obviously it's uh there's a lot of there's a lot of angles to the Drake Bell story mm -hmm. cuz obviously I feel for him as a victim. Yeah. But also, yeah, there are some disturbing things about him. Yeah. It's more to come, I'm sure, but um we have some other clips from that same episode. That this good. is from Do you remember Brian Hearn who was the actor that was made to be put on peanut butter and get licked. Mm, yep. And the, what was that? The fear factor for kids. Yeah. So this is him and Giovanni Samuels, both from all that. This is them reacting to Dan Schneider's apology. Oh, nice. <laughs> Let, spoiler alert. They agree with us. Nice. <laughs> of us. Good for him for calling that out, because that is exactly what is going on. I sort of disagree, though, because I oh. don't know. Only in the sense that I don't even think it was a good performance. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, because when he goes and starts crying, do they cover that in this? No. OK, well, there's a part if anyone hasn't seen it. We actually reacted to it last week on the live where he's just going. Ah, Drake Bell's mother asked me to write her a statement in court because she said I'm not as good with words as you. And, you know, that's something I did. And anyway, um, he was found guilty and just no tears. It was such bad acting. So, yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I wonder how many actual like viewer complaints they got, because I don't think they really covered that in the documentary at all. They were talking about the complaints of you know, actors and writers where they thought it was way too over-sexualized and it absolutely had to, it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I wonder if there were like, you know, the League of Mothers that was out there, you know, writing and saying like, this is way too much of an over-sexualized show. It's such a gray area where, as Dan Schneider put it, oh, it's just kids being goofy. They find feet goofy. Yeah. So peripherally, you know, mom's in the kitchen. Yeah kids are watching all that she may hear a little bit of oh amanda Bynes is doing a dare where she has to brush her teeth with drake bell's foot yeah it's not automatically a siren in her head yet right you know part of it oh maybe that's just kids humor you know we know so much more now about these creeps but i could imagine where a lot of it just kind of blended in 
Right. You know? Yeah. Uh, there's a actual, like, from the Amanda show, I just saw this sketch that popped up, and I'll play it. Oof. And it's bad. Oh, no. And this is during the height of Drake getting raped mm. by Brian Peck, by the way. I didn't get that at it this day. Okay. Yeah, so any sketch called Popper Pants from the mind of Dan Schneider is going to be creepy, I think. Y- yeah. This movie is great! But I wish we had popcorn! I'll get some! Don't leave! I'm wearing popper pants! Popper pants? Yeah! The popcorn you make in your pants! What? Bent over a table and like their ass is ripped open and they're eating the popcorn. It's borderline is, CP at that point. What is funny about that? And that's written by Dan Schneider. Of course, everything was. Yeah. And yeah, this is just it. They, they started not being able to hide it. We saw it with Pickle Boy being like, he likes to tease the pickles and the whole glory hole thing with Ray Romano. And that foot sketch where Amanda has to brush her teeth with Drake's foot. Yeah. All the shots on girls' faces that, you know, obviously made it look like, you know, a bad thing. Again, I'm not trying to say that I was so great. Yeah. But I never found it funny. All that. Or Dan Schneider shows funny as a kid. No. No. I, I had I was way past that intellectually. It did, <laughs> no, because it didn't it didn't add up. Like the Simpsons I was already watching. I read Mad yeah. Magazine. The fuck popcorn pants. Yeah. I mean, I liked um I liked all that, but stuff like this just made me uncomfortable. Like probably though the first season. Yeah. There was a little less of that. Yeah, it was like season one, two, maybe three. Maybe three. Maybe six. Yeah, maybe all of them. <laughs> uh no, I think what's interesting is that all the people who ended up being famous uh from seasons one, two, and three didn't participate in this uh documentary. And we don't really hear from them, like Lori De- Lori Beth Denberg. Um Keenan, we hear a little bit from, but he's like, I have that clip. Oh, I didn't see anything. I never heard it. This was after I was gone. We're going to watch that. But first, actually, I want to play a final clip from the latest episode of Quiet on Set. Okay. Which (laughs) there's another actor that from all that, from the, you know, like 2001 era. Mm -hmm. And he has quite the revelation. Shane Lyons is his name. Okay. Very. Uh, so he says nothing happened to him, but uh, how do I say this without sounding like a complete asshole? Oh boy. I think he, <laughs> I think he's trying to get something going Oh, for like a revelation. So even though nothing happened, he still came up with something. Okay. Because he's a pedophile. <laughs> I mean, mentioning blue balls him compared to what Drake went through, that's kind of... Yeah, exactly. Why even bother? Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I mean, good for you, though, Shane. I, I, look, you seem like a really nice guy. Yeah, but he's the only other person coming out and saying that I know. as a cast member, so I actually, you know... Props to him for of saying course. that because everyone else, oh, I, I've never heard such a thing in my life. Amanda Bynes can't even be, 
you know, found to have a coherent sentence come out of her mouth recently. And, you know, I would just like to hear more about people being like, yeah, they are telling the truth. And I knew about it. I think everyone's scared to act like they were complicit in what was going on, even though it is not their fault. Even if they knew what was going on, they were children. They didn't know how to handle it. And who could? It's oh, the, oh, the video's echoing. Are we echoing now? No, the video was echoing. Oh, were all of them echoing? Maybe the, who knows? Yeah. Well, we'll we'll keep an eye on that. No, I I wasn't trying to make light of it. I just yeah. Compared to the revelations of Drake Bell, they had this whole sit down with this guy Billy, and like you're not going to believe what he has to say. And then he had that that blue ball story. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, anyway. Yeah. Let's um, let's get to the Keenan. All right. So Keenan, Emily Peterson's asking. Uh, well just wondering makes me wonder if the other child stars were paid off like they wanted to do with Jeanette McCurdy mm. and that's true they offered her three hundred thousand dollars not to talk about her experiences on set and she right told them to fuck off which good for her mm. um I think a lot of people would have taken much less and they probably did I think you're right yeah and Keenan's still working for SNL so yes He's got the Hall of Fame longest streak on SNL ever. No one's ever going to beat it. And I think he wants to hold on to that a little too tight. Yes. So this clip is from the Kids' Choice Awards 2014 to begin with. And there's a lot going on in this clip. Yeah. That's where Dan Schneider got his Lifetime Achievement. Yeah. And so right before the Lifetime Achievement Award, this award show is so dumb. Mm Mm-hmm. Does anyone else agree with me? Because <laughs> it's with me? the Nickelodeon Kids Choice Awards, and then all their shows win Best Show. Mm. Like, yeah, duh. <laughs> but what? There's no suspense. <laughs> like all that winner of Best Comedy of the Year. Mm-hmm. So Sam and Cat, the show with Jeanette McCurdy and what's her name, the pop star Ariana Grande. Ari- Ariana Grande. This wit lasted one season. It won best new show. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. And they did not get along on set. She Ariana Grande got preferential treatment. Uh-huh. And Jeanette McCurdy was going crazy having to deal with her and Dan Schneider. Well, Ariana Grande was playing ball, doing, you know, highly sexually suggestive things on oh, yeah. camera, not knowing what she was probably doing. That's how she propelled to superstardom. Yeah. That sort of image. Yeah, that's and so here's the um, Sam and Cat winning best new show. And you'll notice that Jeanette McCurdy does not join them on stage. Wow. And there's a half ass mention of her by Ariana Grande. Mm. So we love you, Dan. Uh, thank you, all the writers Warren, Chris, Dave, Jake. Thank you, Rob and Bruce. There's just so many people to name, so many people who worked on the set of Sam and Cat. And we love thank you, you so much. And we- Boy. So I would like to submit that into evidence yeah <laughs> <laughs> because in the recent clip of keenan thompson on the tamron hall show he acts like he never met dan schneider mm-hmm. i was there for a very short time i don't know i never saw nothing never seen anything ever in my life dan schneider wasn't even on my show even though he got a creator credit and he's the director of many episodes i never saw him <laughs> yeah it's so bizarre <laughs> he tried to get it all out just like boom 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> do we have that clip I thought I did. <laughs> it's not in my clips, okay. but it's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah, I, I did cut it, but for some reason it's not in the the folder. All right, let's get this going. And it's about halfway through the clip when that quiet on set starts. Okay. And then the segue to Good Burger 2. After they talk about quiet on set. There sure is. <laughs> uh, I think it's right here. Yeah, it's a little past that. Yeah. You hit 20 and you look yeah. like you're 20. That's yeah. gonna be- Let's see. Yeah. A little further ahead. Mm-hmm. 
ensemble party. <laughs> what? Yeah. That's a that's a double hey, party. Here's how long he's on that song. Okay. Double party. He's at 20. Created by credit, but you know, oh, a little before this. Yeah. So. Schneider had it happened many times, but you did not lean out of any of the things that you put in the book, including your love for your, your support of Amanda. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the big story in the room, as you know, is this documentary called Quiet on the Set, The Dark Side of Kids TV. It is a series um, that I've watched. I know you haven't seen it and I understand why it's a, you didn't participate in it. Um, you're not quoted in it but it is an investigation into allegations of sexual abuse, racism, sexism, and more at Nickelodeon um, by a show creator, Dan Schneider, who played a part in creating some of the work that you did there. Mm -hmm. um, Schneider produced all that uh, for four seasons and executive produced Keenan Cal, I think just for one season. Yeah, uh, I mean, I know tough. this is hard. It's a tough subject, you know, because it's tough for me because like I can't really speak on things that I never witnessed. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. all these things happened after I left, basically. And basically, that's the hell right on there. Keenan and Kel like that. I mean, he got it created by credit, but when someone says basically, that is an absolute tell that they're not telling the whole truth. I'm no body language expert, but he said it all happened after I was gone, basically. And I've heard that statement so many times lately. I can't speak to what I didn't witness. Basically. <laughs> yeah. Didn't see a thing. I do not recall. That's what a lawyer will tell you to get out of any trouble. I do not recall. Can you force me to recall? No, you can't. Can you prove that I can't recall? No, you can't. <laughs> I can't recall. But, you know, it was a different showrunner. So our worlds weren't really like overly, you know, overlapping like that outside of all that necessarily. And then all that negative necessarily. started happening. Out qualifying language, basically, necessarily, <laughs> not necessarily. And our worlds weren't overly overlapping. He's so nervous. Yeah, At necessarily. And then all that negativity kind of started happening outside of like our tenure there. You know what I mean? So like, I wasn't really aware of a lot of it, but my heart goes out to, you know, anybody that's been victimized or their families, you know what I mean? I mean, like, I think it's a good thing that the doc is out and it's, you know, putting things, you know, on display that need to be, you know, stories that need to be told for this, you know, accountability sake. Um, but it is. How many times did he just say, you know, you know, you know, I mean, he probably is legitimately happy that people are telling the truth, but I think he has, he feels like he has too much to lose. I don't think he has too much to lose. Mm -mm. I think he could absolutely come out and say, you know, yeah, we all knew it was disgusting what was happening or we didn't know it was happening and it was happening right in front of our eyes. And we were just, you know, little kids how are we supposed to know any better i feel horrible that i didn't put a stop to it and yeah. i didn't feel like i could you don't have to pretend like you didn't know anything was going on it's just fake that's the problem like yeah. i'm not saying he's guilty of anything no not at all and it would be uncomfortable to have to who, who wants to talk about that when you're trying to promote you know your new shows? good burger too <laughs> wow the weird part about well we'll get into that there's a weird segue yeah definitely tough to watch because i have fond memories of that place you know and i have fond memories of you know my co-stars and stuff like that so yeah. to hear that they've gone through terrible things like that is just it's really tough um we did reach out to dan schneider's team and they directed us to a response that <laughs> he posted on youtube <laughs> um we also reached out of course to the production company and they said that you know they investigate all of these things um investigate all of the allegations. Well, investigate um, more. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that's his wink, wink. You know, I do have you guys back, so I just can't talk about it right now. But then how do you come out and talk about it after you just denied it? That's my biggest thing, is that yeah. when he feels ready to talk about it, to me, it's already too late because you already denied that you knew anything about it. Yeah. And that to me, you know, ain't the best look. I mean, because it's like, you know, it's supposed to be a safe space, you know, it's supposed to be a safe place for kids. And like to hear all about that is just like, how dare you, yeah. you know? Yeah. Nickelodeon cut ties with Dan Schneider in 2018. And they said that they investigate all formal complaints. But going back to what you said about the memories, I mean, to your point, the reason why when you and Kale returned and you had what was the highest watched reboot 
Uh, Say that again. <laughs> but let me, let me, let me get- He's like, can we stop talking about the shits? Talk about that. <laughs> the numbers right here. Yeah, let yeah, me yeah, make yeah. sure. Uh, let me see. Keenan and Kale, when they reunited for Good Burger 2, mm-hmm. from your own, by the way, his mm-hmm. own production company, right. Artists for Artists, on Paramount Plus in November. It's the streaming platform's most watched original film to date. Mm-hmm. To date. Well, I mean, that's good. Yeah. The weird part about that is he wants to move on from Quiet on Set, but then he's promoting Good Burger 2. Created by Dan Schneider. And the first one was written by Dan Schneider. Dan Schneider acts in it. Yep. And Brian Peck has a very prominent scene as an angry customer in the original Good Burger. So even though he's trying to move on to the next topic, it's still close. <laughs> it's Good Burger universe is tied to Brian Peck and Dan Schneider. Forever. So it's very strange. Yeah. Keenan has to walk a, a weird line here. Yeah. And he was close to tearing up during that. And that's another thing that lets you know that he knows something was going on. Right. He knew. And like we said, it is not his fault. He didn't have anything to do no. with it. I don't think he was protecting them in any sort of way. Seems but, like a great guy. Yeah. Just what what is the harm in saying, man, I got these guys backs. Fuck everybody that fucked anybody over at Nickelodeon. Yeah. That, uh, but then again, he's working for a giant corporation and they'd be like, if you do that to them, you could probably do it to us. <laughs> Lauren Michaels told him, don't comment on quiet on set. You'll look bad. <laughs> You'll look bad. Even though <laughs> <laughs> they go from firing Shane Gillis to having him host. <laughs> right. <laughs> so who knows what's going on over there? The world's now. upside down. I know something happened. And then the other thing I thought was funny this week with quiet on set, I guess. I don't mean to say like I thought a lot of things were funny. Yeah, it was a boatload of chuckles. Sorry. <laughs> Life is funny to me, okay? You know? Guilty. Yeah. That's why we're here at Death and Entertainment. Oh, is this the, what's this story? Uh, Mark Summers. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to talk about. Yeah. Mark Summers is barely in it. Yeah. He has a scene where they show him, I think, the peanut butter clip. Yeah. From the Fear Factor for Kids. Mm-hmm. And Mark Summers, Mark Summers goes, oh. Did that air on Nickelodeon? You sure did. And that's all his participation was in the documentary. Wow. Why is that? It says Mark Hose, Mark Hose, Nickelodeon host Mark Summers walked out of his quiet on set interviewed, says the doc pulled a bait and switch on him. They lied to me. So he felt like uh, they weren't completely honest about his involvement. He's in like, the- it's starting to seem like this is not a positive documentary about nickelodeon oh was it, oh was he towing the company line here a little bit really yeah because he was starting to smell like oh this might be a hit piece oh. and so he left okay so this is variety.com <laughs> uh lit written by emily longretta um she says that mark summers is speaking out about his experience being interviewed for id's quiet on set During an appearance on the Elvis Duran in the morning show, the longtime host said he was called and asked to be a part about the doc about Nickelodeon. At the time he agreed, he didn't know it was set to expose toxic behavior at the network. Well, I mean, he did say at the beginning, he's like, you know what? This is just fun TV. You're not going to learn anything on Nickelodeon. You're just here to have fun. Right. That was the appeal. But and he was gone legitimately well before Keenan was not. Yeah. But he when did Double Dare end? Like 94, 93? Maybe like maybe like 96, 97. Okay. Um but still, yeah, I do get And he had nothing to do with no, Dan Schneider. Of course not. So what the hell would he care? Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't. That's... Well he would care, but still. Yeah. Cause he's associated with that brand. Yeah. Double Dare went from 86 to 87, then 90 to 93, and then 2000, they brought it back, and then it wasn't uh, until 2018. So it was done as early as 93. Yeah, so the early, yeah, the first release was October 6th, 86 to February 7th, 93. That's crazy. that is when I was into Nickelodeon. Yeah. Are You Afraid of the Dark, the early seasons, Mm -hmm. when all that was part of SNCC? Yes. I'm a snicker. <laughs> and then I'd stopped. Yeah. Because I didn't think it was funny. Mm. Sue me. 
Yeah. I didn't find popper pants funny. You're very highbrow. Yeah, highbrow. I didn't find pickle boy amusing. Yeah. Just call me a snob. A lot of people bringing this up. Anderson Slade says Nickelodeon slime is an Illuminati humiliation ritual. Um, ah. It's been coming up a lot lately with the Diddy story and, you know, Nickelodeon that these humiliation rituals are a way for people to kind of sell their integrity to the higher ups and let them know that they'll play ball. So and the Cat Williams thing of dressing in drag. Yes, exactly. Which was done a hell of a lot on Keenan and Cal. Yeah. So it's almost a power move saying we own you. We know you're going to grovel for this money. Here you go. We'll pay you off a little bit of money. Enjoy the fame. Ugh. Um, yeah, which I think, you know, is probably actually real and true. <laughs> it makes a lot of sense. It does. Uh, yeah. Summers hosted the Nickelodeon game show from 86 to 93, said that when they told him that they were they were actually making a documentary about detailing Dan Schneider's behavior and Brian Peck's sexual assault of Drake Bell, he walked off set. And he got a phone call about six weeks ago saying, you're totally out of the show. And I went, great. Then they called me about four weeks ago and said, well, you're in it, but you're only in the first part because you talked about the positive stuff about Nickelodeon. <laughs> he can't win because then that makes him look bad. Yeah, he's like, Nickelodeon's great. <laughs> Nothing bad ever happened here. Although they included that clip of him reacting to that yeah. Fear Factor sketch. Right. I thought he came off well. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he has to worry in the least about being tied up with their behavior. He's on a totally different show, different set, yeah. had nothing to do with Brian Peck or Dan Schneider. To his point, though, what is he going to say about Brian Peck and Drake Bell when asked on camera? Yeah. You'd be caught off guard like, oh, wait, what happened? Yeah. What? I didn't write a letter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Imagine if he was one of the people. That'd be. Oh, my God. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Full disclosure, I saw Double Dare live in 2019 mm -hmm. in downtown L.A. Uh, what, I'm sorry, what'd you say? Yeah, let that sink in. I Kyle. was just looking up one thing to talk about, but what'd you say? I saw Double Dare live no in way! 2019. Oh, wow. That's great. Yeah. Did they bring back the big nose? They, they sure did. Flag out of yeah, it? it was like a Double Dare episode. There you go. <laughs> I don't think I'm a creep. I was invited. Yeah, okay. Brian Peck over There's here. A group going anyway. Yeah, we got a group going to see kids do uh, <laughs> okay. physical activities. <laughs> Brian Peck. Physical challenges. Jesus Christ. Um, um, oh, did you know that he directed a movie? No. Called The Willies. Oh, boy. And this was like a real movie that was released <laughs> around like 1990, and it features Donkey Lips. Donkey Lips? Yeah, from Salute Your Shorts. Wow. Camp on a wanna and we hold Sean, you in our heart, Sean Aston. And when we think about you, it, it makes, makes me want to fart. Who remembers that? Who remembers? Uh, Who else needs a colonoscopy? You remember that? <laughs> <laughs> Who else remembers Zeke the plumber? Oh, that was terrifying television. God. We want to do a spinoff, right? Where we talk about terrifying children's television that spoke to us when we were kids. Yes. Because yours was good, too. The Garbage Man. Oh, yeah. From uh, Slim Goodbody. Yeah. There was a homeless guy that talked about eating junk food. Oh, the homeless he guy. Was terrifying. Yeah. Absolutely terrifying. I concur. That clip was freaky. And I spent years of my adult uh, life trying to find what character and what show it was and it wasn't until probably a few months ago you were with me when I finally found it and I was like yeah. holy shit this is it yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah we'll have to do a little thing on that sometime but yeah so Brian Peck directed this movie called The Willies oh Brian Peck did yes oh I thought you were talking about Mark Summers no Brian Peck Jesus yeah I'm like did you know he directed a feature film no what a strange career though it's like Victor Salva yeah. It's so he goes from be he's in Return of the Living Dead. He acts in the 1980s. Yeah. And he directs this horror comedy called The Willies. Yeah. With a bunch of child actors, unfortunately. And then he becomes a dialogue coach on Growing Pains, where he flirts with Leo DiCaprio. Mm. There's a famous clip of that we've watched. And then he continues to coach young kids and becomes embedded in Nickelodeon by the end of the 90s. 
Yeah. What a strange career. What a strange town Holly Weird is. It sure is. Good thing we live in North Holly Weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, one of our listeners was asking if we both live in LA. Yes, we do. Um, and Shannon just brought up Large Marge. <laughs> yeah, that was pretty terrifying. And the clown scene. Yeah. There's one. Oh, and what is with clowns? Does anyone not find them terrifying? Um, I didn't think they were bad growing up. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, yeah, he, so was, much... he was on Returning the Living Dead, Row. Yeah. And to reuse one of my lines from a past live stream, there is a lot to unpack here. Oh, boy. Did you know that Dan Schneider did a sitcom in the late 90s called Guys Like Us? I don't know. It didn't last a whole season. Guess who was on that show as a clown? Who? Brian Peck. Oh, no. And if you'll recall, Brian Peck was pen pals with John Wayne Gacy, who used to go to parties dressed as the clown. There's something weird with clowns. Yeah. Because Victor Salva directed Clown House. Yeah. There is something. Just saying. Well, I won't talk about how I was a clown on uh, <laughs> last week tonight with John Oliver. But that's John Every Oliver. clown except for me, okay? Yes. <laughs> John Oliver has a lot of prestige. You were a prestige clown. Yes. Highbrow clown. Yeah. That caused an international incident. We'll talk about it someday. <laughs> but not today. No. <laughs> The poltergeist clown was the worst, too. Yeah. Oh, that was freaky. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And the clown from or it wasn't really a clown, that doll from the opening of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Oh, yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> so <scary>. Oh, <laughs> Zebo. Zebo the clown. Zebo the clown. Yeah. One of the early episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark? Steal the nose. Oh, the nose nose. <laughs> <laughs> When you're laughing in the dark. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, we do have someone from Nickelodeon that actually spoke up about it. Blues Glue star Steve Burns weighs in on Quiet on Set Side. Oh, okay. Says he had no knowledge. Because, of course, why would he? He wasn't on that set. And he was filming in New York. Right. Blue's Clues was Nick Jr. And it was filmed in New York, he said. Nick Jr. So he, he really had nothing to do with it, but he still has got a way in, you know? Yeah. Emily is still scared of Zebo the Clown. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and Emily, did you think it was... Did you... Let me... How do I get phrase this? <laughs> get to, to, to today, Jr. <laughs> Suddenly, I'm like, it's not, still, what do you, I'm yeah. stuttering, John. <laughs> No, Emily, did you like the part where he warms up the leftover spaghetti and the mom left him pudding? That reminds me of like things my parents would do before they went out for the <laughs> evening. I love the details in that episode. Yes. And then you'd be with your siblings, hopefully not alone in the house, and it would be so freaky then. Mm. The clown doesn't look as scary as I remember. <laughs> you were saying that? I'm looking at him right now. And we... we uh, rewatched the episode. Yeah. And you fell asleep like three times. Yeah. I got sleep apnea. What do you want from me? <laughs> Did you get your machine yet? No. Are you getting it soon? Mm, I don't know. We'll see. Can people in the chat convince Kyle to get a CPAP machine? Anybody want to donate a Z CPAP machine? <laughs> a Zebo Pap <laughs> CPAP <laughs> machine. Yeah, it's just a no clown nose that goes up my nose. Uh, Yeah. Yeah, th that was... That's a great episode. Yeah. Uh, but let's see. Wait, did we go back here? Yes, we did. Uh, so Steve, Steve really had nothing to say. Why is he even making a statement? Well, because people are. I would like to release a statement publicly on the record. I do not know a thing about said subject. Oh, Goodbye. you think he just came out and said that? You don't think people have been knocking down his door know, for the I, last two months? I'm having a little fun here. I'm clowning around. Hey! He says, I don't have any particular insight into any of that. Except for the one time I saw Brian Peck 
Just kidding. Sucking like Okay. I'm coming to it much the same as anyone else with horror and heartbreak. It's just terrible to watch it unfold. I don't know what else to say other than that it's heartbreaking. Uh, but he does go on to say them feet smell rotten though. Uh, it's got to be so unfathomably painful. The fact that this is now what everyone's talking about at the water cooler just breaks my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Or at brutal. the ecto cooler. Mm, nice. <laughs> Slime. Slime. You get it. Slimer. Uh. Yeah, and I. I mean, I would rather that than. Keenan being like, I never heard. I agree. I never saw anything. I love Steve from Blue's Clues. Yeah. Never watched the show. Of course, I was too old. Yeah. Legitimately, yeah. was too old. You were, uh, you were too highbrow for that. When <laughs> way too old. <laughs> <laughs> and in our Urban Legends episode, we debunked the myth. If you're all listening, breaking news: Steve from Blue's Clues did not die of a heroin overdose. Mm. He went to college. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah, it was a uh, a big uh, <laughs> thing. Fat lie. <laughs> you were talking about Dan Schneider? Yeah. <laughs> His apology? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so Manu needs to see Pat Machine, too. Does anybody have two that they can give me and Manu? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need Manu and Kyle to get better sleep. Yeah, exactly. I'm a little tired right now. Oh. <sighs> Get a kid on the way in three weeks. Somebody help. What ain't going to get better from here? No, it's not. That's why I need one. Yeah. Okay. And for our last transition of the night. Ooh. It brings us to today's. <laughs> of the week. Ooh. And what do we have for you this week? Uh, much. Much ado about uh, nothing. Okay. Only Mr. Alec Baldwin. Oh, that old rusty subject? Making his return appearance on another episode of Death and Entertainment Tonight Live. Um, Yeah, the prosecutors are coming out swinging, saying Alec Baldwin had no control over his emotions on Rust set and also had no control over his weapon. So they're saying... Uh, I follow a lot of lawyers that are covering this situation, and they are saying fat chance on a deal. Unless he pleads guilty, they ain't going to give him a deal. Mm -hmm. um, they think that his story stinks to high heaven, and they are going to go after him. And they said that after, uh, what's her name, Gutierrez? Hannah Gutierrez-Reed. Hannah Gutierrez-Reed was already found guilty. They are saying that it's way easier the second time around. Just like Full House. The second time around. Right, because oh. the seal is broken. Yes. Um, so, you know, second time around is going to be much easier. So they literally think, like, they're not, even if he pleads guilty, they're not going to give him a deal. Mm. Um, the Guardian says here, New Mexico state prosecutors plan to argue that Alec Baldwin was unable to control his emotions on the set of the film Rust, where cinematographer Helena Hutchins was killed when a gun held by the actor went off and that he shamelessly lied and changed his story about the deadly shooting. There's also multiple lawyers that said it was a horrible look for him to go on ABC with George Stephanopoulos mm -hmm. and do this interview without a lawyer there, all on his own, trying to manipulate the story in his favor. And so manipulative. It was such a performance. Yeah. And that was a good performance, unlike Dan Schneider. Yeah. But when we heard the leaked phone call, I noticed he was using a lot of the same lines that he would later use in the Stephanopoulos interview. This does not help me. And one of them was, <laughs> so help me, God. <laughs> I was on that bench and I loved making movies again. Oh, my God. <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> Eladia. Take a left. Excuse me. We're, up, we're, we're in Vermont. <laughs> Um, My wife is from Spain. I have children here. Yeah. Uh, flying out there won't work for me. I got six or seven kids to take care of. I don't remember. <laughs> uh, the 66-year-old 66 actor is due to go on trial in July on a charge of involuntary manslaughter for his part in Hutchins' death in Santa Fe. And we have a little snippet here from Court TV talking about the latest. All right. Fully responded. 
The prosecution officially responded to Alec Baldwin's defense motion to dismiss it. And ooh, in this filing, this 300 pages long, and there's some bombshell. That's the crazy part is that it was 300 pages released this week. Yeah. Among them, Baldwin's team initially told the state that they were planning on calling A-list actors like Harrison Ford and Helen Mirren. But prosecutors said this was all, uh, and this was part of a meeting that they all had. It'd be, it'd be great if they played uh, Harrison Ford telling um, David, Bruno? Blaine, David Blaine, get the fuck out of my house. <laughs> oh, yeah. I remember Harrison Ford and Bruno? Uh, I don't. I haven't seen Bruno, actually. You haven't seen Bruno? No, just Borat. There's a part where Bruno gets a TV show and he keeps teasing this big interview with Harrison Ford. <laughs> so he's like, are you ready to see the interview with Harrison Ford? And then it cuts to Harrison Ford going, fuck off. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Manu says, how you say drop soap? <laughs> Um, early on in this case, and they said, you know what, that turned out to be very misleading because none of those people are on the defense witness list. Another big takeaway here, the prosecution rescinded a plea deal that was on the table with Baldwin after it was leaked uh, by his attorney, allegedly to a reporter, and Baldwin allegedly commissioned his own documentary Ooh, into exactly what happened. Uh, according to the state, he was actively pressuring material witnesses uh, in the case against him to uh, submit to interviews for his documentary. That's a bizarre. Uh, so he was using a documentary as a way to start spinning tales and controlling the narrative. Yeah. That is ballsy. And uh, he's charged, of course, with the involuntary manslaughter in the death of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. His trial set to begin, and it looks like it's going now. Both sides are just, uh, this doesn't seem like a thing that this, there's going to be a deal here. This goes in July. Uh, we will be there, of course, uh, and watch it all together. Oh, yeah. We will be there, too. Oh, boy. We'll be here. Yeah, we're going to be here and there in spirit. Yeah. And the prosecution officially responded to Alec Baldwin's defense motion to dismiss it. And ooh, in this filing, this 300 pages long, and there's some bombshells. It's replay, and we heard that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Among them, Baldwin's team initially A-list actor. Oh, the whole thing. Yeah, that's fine. We can <laughs> we oh. saw the cliff. <laughs> oh, okay. I thought we had more to go. No, but I am very much looking forward to that trial. Yeah. Yeah, there's a, a lot of people saying he fucked up before the movie started, hiring the wrong people, looking to cut corners on costs. Which and he like, already... Every film production wants to cut corners and save some money. Every, every film production. True, but there's a line. Not to the detriment of there's your own a, production. There's a limit. There's a limit. Ooh, there's a limit. <laughs> and did you know he had a title already for the documentary? It's called Not So Quiet on set. Nice. Boom. Pow. Woo. Hosted by Al Pacino. <laughs> He's one of the interviewees. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you think about the tragedy? This whole oh. set's out of order. <laughs> tragedy. <laughs> this interview is a tragedy. <laughs> hoo -ah. hoo. They say to watch Mr. Baldwin's, Baldwin's conduct on the set of Rust is to witness a man who has absolutely no control of his own emotions and absolutely no concern for how his conduct affects those around him. All right, well, we got to revisit this while it's too tempting. This is yeah. the last scene cinematographer Helena Hutchins ever filmed. So this is the footage of Alec Baldwin looking like a maniac. Alec Baldwin rehearsing a shooting scene. Moments later, the gun was fired, killing her and injuring the film's director. Tonight, never before seen footage from the set of Rust, more, taken more, in the days more. before the fatal shooting of cinematographer Helena Hutchins. Now, wait a second. If I'm going to shoot right, you want to go on the other side of the camera? I don't want to shoot toward you. The clips obtained exclusively by NBC ball. News show the actor yeah, preparing for scenes, firing <laughs> weapons, and interacting with crew members. I don't know why you're going up hills and all this. Other. You're going to break your 
neck. According to a source familiar with the matter, these videos are among dozens provided to special prosecutors days before they announced plans to recharge Baldwin with involuntary manslaughter. NBC News has not seen the rest of the videos. And everyone rolling, doesn't rolling. need to be right here, like in the path of the gun. So what we're about to see is the moment where, you know, if you're paying close attention, you'll hear cut and then Baldwin fires again. John, could you please move? What do you need to do, Thomas? Uh, as soon as you guys are three minutes away, I'll do my final wire and we'll go hot. Okay. You're hot? You need to do no, anything? No, I'm not hot yet. Okay, wait. I want to see where... You hot? <laughs> The camera, so everybody knows the time. We'll get all that shit back once we wire him and we know where it's got to be. Yeah, look at her. Bring me that purple haired girl <laughs> yeah, wait, what? with the bullets. <laughs> Bring me that court jester. I'm ready to shoot <laughs> bullets. I'll bring him up here. So let's wait before we hook him up. Yeah, otherwise he can catch also. No. I hate to say it, but jail is a good look for her. Yeah. She really cleaned up nice. <laughs> she should go on trial more often. And it will be a good look for Baldwin. Mm -hmm. I cannot wait for this trial anyway. Yeah. How, uh, Thomas, how much blood do you think is going to come out? If the lens is right here, it'll, it'll, it'll get on you from there. It'll get on the lens here. It'll get on you. See, I was sleeping ahead. All right, It seems like none of them know what they're doing or what's going on. No. Set, set, ready, and One more, one more, one more. Right now. He's not the director, mind you. No. One more, one more. Right away, right away. Let's reload. Here we go. Right away. I'm reloading. Here we go. Come on. Okay. We should add two guns and both will be reloading. Second, I'm gonna shoot right. Do you want to go on the other side of the camera? I don't want to shoot toward you. Okay. Okay. I want to shoot close to you. Notice how you never hear Joel Souza say anything? Yeah, exactly. The director. Yeah. Here we go. Set. Here we go. Ah, ready. And action. Did you notice he started going ah, before they said action? It's called method acting. <laughs> You wouldn't understand. And that's why I also shoot the guns after they say cut. Yeah, you wouldn't understand. You're a poor person. Go! That is shocking to me every time I see it. Mm -hmm. Cut. Cut. Yeah. It's not good. No. Yeah. It's many things, but it's not good. Yeah. Gutierrez Reed is going to be sentenced in the next few weeks here. She faces up to 18 months in prison. Uh, Alex going to go on trial in July, and we will see. We will be live streaming that Get entire trial. Get your popcorn pants ready. Yeah, and we will be live streaming the trial of You just let that callback slip under the Karen Reed. I'm gonna I was gonna give it props after I'm still in the middle of discussing <laughs> April 16th. We're gonna start live streaming the um Karen Reed trial over here. So that's gonna start our uh new foray into live streaming trials. I almost said childs. <laughs> Jesus. But yikes. He, Dan Snyder? Yeah, Brian Peck over here. Uh yeah, so <laughs> get your popcorn pants and pickles ready. Hey, there we go. <laughs> she was my friend. <laughs> um, yeah, the defense or the prosecutors are saying there's absolutely no way that he could have 
had the gun fire without him pulling the trigger. So he is responsible. And he's a producer. Let us not forget that. Lest us forget. Lest we forget. Yes. We won't. We won't. We will definitely not. Yeah, he is, um, how you say, fucked. (laughs) How you say in English, fucked. Uh, Very bad outcomes (laughs) coming his way. Um, Too bad James Lipton isn't still around for Inside the Actor's Studio. This trial is scrumptulescent. Who you actually told, you told me a fact about that show. That Alec Baldwin was the very first guest. Season one, episode one. Inside the actor's studio. Yep. We're going to have to find um, video of that. It's very hard to find. And so I'm not going to try right now. But uh, next time. And if he was still around it, James Lipton would be like, do rest. <laughs> and Baldwin would be like, go, go. <laughs> Less money. <laughs> bang, bang, my friend's dead. <laughs> ah, shit. I'm not a murderer. I did not murder her. This movie looks ridiculous. Yeah. I can't wait till we can actually see it. Yeah, Didn't what they, someone but, died for. No, but oh, come on. Don't yeah. be a buzzkill. <laughs> Jesus. God, I was having a good time. I was having fun over here. But they did finish the movie. Yes. And you know what else we finished? What? This live. Oh, my God. Has it come time to end this already? Two hours. Thank you so much, guys. We hardly got into anything. Yes. Uh, we have... 10 10 x our original live stream audience which is wow. incredible let's keep it coming tell your friends tell your friends okay we come over here we have some fun we make fun of some people we remember some people that passed away and uh that's you know really what it comes down to here at death and entertainment mm-hmm. and dipod studios yeah we love all of you and we're happy to spend our tuesday nights with you yes or Thank- if it's 3 a.m. in Ireland. Or if it's Wednesday. And yeah, they, for us, it's Tuesday. Yeah, we like spending our mornings, yeah. afternoons. You nights. have joined us from the future, and we appreciate that. Uh, all over the U.S. and the world. We got people from Ireland in this one. We got uh, uh, people from down under. And Kyle, do you have a teaser for tomorrow's Death and Entertainment podcast episode? Because I don't even know the subject yet. Yes, I know exactly what we're covering tomorrow and what we're about to record right now. What? Daytime television murders. Really? Yes. So if you know anything about the Jenny Jones saga. Oh, my. Really? That's what? Wow. Because that's a huge one. And if you know anything about Christina's court with Christina Perez. um, Yeah, that's uh, two stories in one. One's a little appetizer. And then the Jenny Jones uh, story is a little bit more of the main course, wow. if you will. Yeah, that is a really uh, important story, too. Yeah. Because that changed the course of daytime trash TV. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. It's an interesting one. Yeah. It'll I, be a good listen tomorrow. I can't wait to listen, but I guess I'm going to be a part of it. Yeah, you're <laughs> about to hear it all in about five minutes. So. <laughs> oh, and Shannon, we had about the same turnout at 3 p.m. last week. Yeah, it was about 60, between 60 and 70 people. Again, I had moved heaven and earth because I thought I had a big event to go to. <laughs> and it turns out yeah. that was not the case. But I'm happy to be back here yeah. at our normal time. And I thought, Kyle, that it would be fitting if we went out with a tribute to Larry David and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Let's do it. Okay, so we're going to watch that with you, and then we will bid our adieu. Yes. And this is from the first finale of Curb, season five. Mm. And I thought this was an even better way to go out for him. So anything else before I play this, Kyle? We love you. Okay. And until next week. Don't go down. Yes. Consider it to other people. Is, is there anybody right now that you can think of that like to ask for forgiveness? Make right with it. When you walk through my door, you play by my rules! You take off your fucking shoes! Devoted to love and 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 love you were following my wife? I wasn't following her. She called the cops on what? you. What do you mean? You look at me. You knew that my brother-in-law died on September 11th. How dare you say something like that? See, if this were yours, it would say fucking douchebag. 
You motherfucking cock-sucking son of a bitch bastard. I will body slam you so hard that you will poop your bald pants. You need a good Ooh. fucking ass kicking. Oh. That's what you oh. need. You want to name our baby Tang? Hey, hold the door! Right now! Oh. Oh. 